What's up YouTube? Welcome to Cars, Costs, and Technology. Today I'm going to be sharing with you five interesting things about the C7 Corvette Stingray that you may not have already known. If you have a C7 Corvette, you probably have stumbled across most of these on this list already, but yeah, I think you'll still find the video very informative. I put this video together because I feel like most reviews out there are not emphasizing these features or covering them in detail, and I think that they're, very, they're really worth sharing and making sure that all you guys out there that either just bought a Corvette Stingray or getting ready to buy one know about some of these cool things that are, uh, again, not often often discussed or, or went over thoroughly. So I think that you'll really enjoy the video, guys. I know I found most of these interesting myself. So number one that I want to discuss is the active fuel management system. Um, this is the first Corvette ever to be able to run on four cylinders from uh, from production. So what that means is it sounds like a terrible thing, I know, but it actually is a really innovative design. And basically, obviously, you got a 6.2 liter V8 in the, in the Corvette Stingray. And uh, it actually has the ability to switch down to four cylinders while you're just cruising on the highway. Now, if you have an automatic, um, this can happen in all modes when you're not needing any power, uh, or excuse me, all driving modes, that is. Uh, if you have a manual, it only happens in eco mode. And basically what this does is, again, if you're just cruising at highway speeds, um, not really on the gas, it's going to switch down to four cylinders to save uh, gas. Um, and as soon as you use the, the throttle or, or start to hit the gas again, um, it's going to jump back up to V8, so you're never going to find yourself you know, sluggish or stuck in four-cylinder mode. Um, it happens very seamlessly. I've never even realized it happening but what this allows is the car to really excel especially in, in highway efficiency you can see even with a really large v8 when you compare it to some comparable sports cars or some of its competitors with much smaller engines it actually has better uh, highway fuel mileage so i think that's really impressive that you can have you know say compare it to a four-cylinder competitor um, four-cylinder turbocharged engine that gets worse highway fuel economy than uh, you know naturally aspirated 6.2 liter v8 engine so i think that's just an awesome feature and again it happens so seamlessly you never even realize it going on and there's ways around it ever kicking in if you just stay in the gas but I don't know that you could just always keep the throttle applied um, or if you have the manual transmission if you never go into eco mode you'll never see this feature so for those of you thinking that's a bad thing again there's ways around it kicking in I personally think it's very innovative and think that it's great you know why not save gas especially while you're cruising down the highway without noticing any difference in performance so thought it was really awesome next thing I want to discuss is the valet mode on this car um, this is a really cool feature that kind of gives you peace of mind if you do have to let a valet take your car or even let a friend move your car or borrow it. Um, some of you have probably seen the screen that goes up and down or at least the, uh, the infotainment system uh, goes in uh, and retracts and actually gives you a, a storage cubby behind it which is really unique um, in itself but there's more cool features about this screen. If you go into your settings you can actually turn on valet mode and what valet mode does is gives you the option to set up a, uh, a pin or a code once your code is set up, you can lock uh, this screen from, from opening as well as your glove box. So if you have some personal items in there that you don't want a valet or you don't want somebody uh, touching in your car, you're able to lock that up and they cannot get in until they are able to put in the code. Um, I think that in itself is very cool. Another thing I wanted to discuss though that many of you may not realize, uh, if you have the performance data recorder, which unfortunately my car does not, you can actually turn that on while the car is in valet mode. So not only does it lock your storage so they can't touch your personal items, but it also records exactly what's happening to the car you know as far as where it's going um, the GPS location of the car the speed that way you know you pretty much not only are able to keep them out of touching your personal belongings but you're also able to see exactly how they handled your car while, while they were moving it um, pretty much the worst nightmare for a bad valet driver because this is going to completely protect the car and give the driver a lot of uh, a lot of peace of mind so I think it's a really awesome feature and again it's very useful if you do get your car valeted often or even if you're in a situation where you have to let a friend use it or family member use it and you're not all that comfortable with them getting into your belongings or uh, abusing the car without your knowledge so um, having the performance data recorder would be really cool like i said unfortunately mine doesn't have it but if you have it make sure you use that feature if you're ever letting a valet uh, park your car next thing i want to go over is the secret entrance into the car it's not really secret um, basically uh, with the c6 corvette this is kind of where it all begins Again, uh, there's no door handles or mechanical door handles, at least on the outside of the car. It's an electronic pad. So you actually got above the license plate a keyhole. Um, on the C7 Corvette, they changed the design and actually put the uh, physical key itself inside your key fob. So you want to make sure you never lock your key fob in the car. But um, once you pull this key out, you're actually able to put it uh, in the keyhole above the license plate. 
Uh, when you do that, you're able to actually unlock the trunk hatch. Um, this will set off the alarm if the battery isn't completely dead, so keep that in mind. But once you do that, um, again, when the trunk hatch opens up, in, in the trunk, it's kind of discreet. You probably have noticed it before if you have a C7 Corvette, but there's a small lever or handle that you can pull. When you pull that, that's actually going to open the door. Now, uh, um, again, it, kind of an odd way of going about opening the door. Hopefully you never have to use that unless if your battery's dead. Um, I would imagine your battery would have to be pretty dead for even the door handles not to work, but it's just a cool little feature they've got built in there as a safety precaution to make sure that you have a means of getting in the car if the, in the event that the battery's dead. Um, and also for uh, most th car thieves, they'd never know that this car doesn't have physical door handles that they wouldn't be able to operate without uh, having to go through the trunk. Uh, next thing I want to cover is the lack of gas cap or spare tire. These are just common items you'd find in most cars, and I thought it was interesting that on the C7 Corvette there is no gas cap. It's got this uh, sort of valve opening that, that you just slide the uh, nozzle of the fuel pump into. Now, um, I know a lot of newer cars are going to this design, so it may not be un completely uncommon, but again, this is the first time this has ever been on a Corvette, so uh, I think it's a pretty uh, cool feature. Um, I mean, I find it much more convenient than having to actually take the cap off and try to rest the cap somewhere. Um, as far as the spare tire goes, the Corvettes for a long time haven't had spare tires. Um, they use the run flat tire system. So, uh, you know, if, if you were to ever get a flat or damage your tire, obviously it's very important to get somewhere that can change your tire out as quickly as possible. But um, if you're looking in the trunk for a spare, it's not going to be there. So just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, so next thing I want to go over is actually covering the uh, Stingray name itself. Now, for those of you that have been Corvette enthusiasts for a long time, you know that the uh, C7 is not the original Corvette Stingray. It's actually the C2 uh, back between 63 and 67 was the original Corvette Stingray. Uh, ironically, the original Corvette Stingray it can go for significantly more than the most current C7 Corvette Stingray, um, if, especially if you're looking at, say, like a, a 67, 427 Corvette Stingray. Those are going for as much as $200,000. So um, it, to me, it's really cool that they brought the Corvette Stingray name back. Um, I love that name. I think it represents, uh, you know, there's a lot of history there, a lot of prestige around that name. And I think that it draws a lot of respect from uh, Corvette enthusiasts. So I'm really glad they brought the name back. And to me, it's exciting to be able to own one. Hopefully these will one day be as valuable as the original Stingrays. Um, so I think it's just a cool part of the heritage or the history of this car. Um, if you didn't know about the original Corvette Stingray, definitely look it up. One of my favorite Corvettes from, you know, the beginning eras. But uh, anyway, guys, thought that was really interesting. So hopefully you've enjoyed this list and these are you've learned some new things about the uh, C7 Corvette Stingray. Um, if you're new to my channel, definitely check out all my other Corvette content. I've got a lot more uh, information on this channel about my C7. More videos to come as well. So definitely give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more Corvette content. I appreciate you watching, guys. Have a great day.